What's going on YouTube? Drumline here. Today I'm going to be doing a reaction video to Chris Turner, the drummer for Ocean's 8 Alaska. Now this came as a recommendation to me from a comment on one of my other videos. So I'm going to go ahead and check it out because I've actually never seen Chris play in a solo type session before. I know for one thing that he's a very tight and a very technical drummer, just based off the music that I've heard from Ocean's 8 Alaska. So I'm curious to see what he does in this song we're going to check out. So without further ado, let's take a look at this. <laughs> that intro. Okay, so right off the bat, I can see Chris sits very high on his drum throne. Now, usually for playing double bass, uh, if you're playing double bass a lot throughout a song, there's always the issue of keeping your balance. And one way to help deal with that is to have your drum thrown up just a little bit higher than you might normally sit on it. That way your legs are kind of at this sort of angle instead of completely perpendicular with the floor. So doing that, uh, it can feel a little awkward, but it is necessary for maintaining balance. Also, I noticed that he is playing without shoes. That's another thing that uh, a lot of drummers actually do. I don't, I don't play without shoes. I don't, I don't do barefoot or in socks because I kind of, I kind of like the grip that shoes provide on the pedal. Now, depending on the style and the techniques that you're using for your, uh, for your bass drum pedals, playing in just your socks or barefoot can, for one. I believe help with the feel. You can actually feel the beater hit the, the batter head of the bass drum a lot easier if you're barefoot. And also if you're doing any type of technique that involves um, like a slide, if you're doing like quick doubles or a rough rudiment with the bass drum, being in your socks can, it can help make your, make your foot slide easier on the pedal, which makes those movements a little bit easier. So, all right, let's continue to check this out. His playing is ridiculously tight. These aren't exactly easy patterns to pull off, and yet he's he's nailing everything with almost a laser-like precision. Everything from what he's doing with the kicks to the patterns that he's doing with his hands. Uh, complex stuff, very tight. There's really very little room for error when you're playing stuff like this because from what I can hear, what the drums and the guitars are playing everything is just lined up everything is lined up just like this so if you fall out of that if you fall out of pocket so to speak with that sonically it, it you're gonna pick that up and he's he's doing it flawlessly so far incredible work also i'm getting a real strong like matt garska kind of vibe uh you know the drummer from animals as leaders kind of feel just with how technical he's playing and and whatnot so let's continue Open it up a little bit, letting it breathe.
Okay, I want to take a minute to talk about his kit setup. Uh, he's obviously rocking DW. Um, everything from the pedals to the drum set itself, uh, DW. Uh, looks like Sabian cymbals, and he's got some interesting choices, like for his splashes. They're they're like little China cymbals, but really small. Um, also, his kit is pretty minimalistic he's got a floor tom a rack tom the snare and that's it just the, the bare necessities for what you need and you don't see those setups a whole lot for for metal drummers typically um metal musicians you got toms all over the place cymbals everywhere i mean even my kit is somewhat fairly large uh, but his is simple and to the point he is exactly what he needs no muss no fuss which is very useful if you do a lot of touring playing a lot of gigs it, the the drum roadie definitely will appreciate you for it because that's a lot less to have to worry about setting up and and whatnot from show to show let's continue Also, um, something else that I noticed is the room environment that he's recording in. I don't see any type of real acoustical treatment in this room. It's very, it's bright. It's a bright room because there's not much to really dampen the sound of the kit. Uh, I mean, you've got, you know, a, it could be a concrete wall behind him and I guess wood flooring underneath him. Uh, but the fact that the kit still sounds this good is a testament to the mic placement and the audio engineering that went behind uh, getting the sound. Which, um, from what I understand, Chris does a lot of the audio engineering stuff for Ocean's 8 Alaska. So I feel pretty sure he probably did the mixing and the audio engineering for this particular playthrough too. Which he did a, a, a wonderful job at that. So salute to him. <laughs> oh the ending uh it, it definitely leaves some questions i feel like it's part of a story or something uh but in any case that was one hell of a playthrough uh, a lot of technical stuff going on there uh I mean, rudiments wise, there was some there was some complex things happening that if he did this all in one take, incredible, absolutely incredible. Just the kick patterns alone would be enough to stop most drummers in their tracks, probably me included. So I'm definitely going to check out some more by Chris because I'm, I'm thoroughly interested in his solo work. And yeah, uh, if you guys have any more recommendations for drummers I should check out, please leave it in the comments. And also, uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this reaction video. And I uh, look forward to talking to you all in the comments. Later.